Hello and welcome to IELTS test series. Test 1. You will hear a number of different recordings and you will have to answer questions on what you hear. The test is in four sections. At the end of the test, you will be given 10 minutes to transfer your answers to an answer sheet. All the recordings will be played once only. Now turn to section 1. Section 1. In this part of the test, you listen to a dialogue and complete a form. Read the form carefully before you listen. A new business owner inquires about courses. Listen to the conversation and complete each gap with no more than three words. Hello, this is Business Nationwide. Daniel speaking. How can I help you? Hi there. Uh, I've recently started up a small business and I noticed on your website that you run some courses for people who are starting up. That's right, we do. We offer two courses which may be of interest to you. Our first course is called Getting Started. It's a two-hour evening course and it runs from 6pm to 8pm. We discuss things like, is starting a business right for me? Writing a business plan and some of the legal issues. It runs at various locations in the area. Where are you based? I live in Eastleigh. Eastleigh. So the closest course to you would be in Handbridge. And the next one is on the 20th of March. Uh-huh. And how much is that? That one is free. OK. Well, it might be worth it. But did you say you're trading already? Yes, since about August. Well, you might be better off taking our three-day course, Business Basics. It's not free, I'm afraid. It's subsidised and costs £80 for the three days, unless you've been unemployed in the past six months, in which case it's just £20. No, that doesn't apply to me. Well, it's well worth the money. The three days cover the essential aspects of running a business. The first day covers legal issues such as tax, insurance, employment laws and health and safety. The second day covers marketing and pricing, and the third covers accounting and bookkeeping. It sounds useful. Does the Business Basics course take place in Handbridge too? Uh, let me see. No, it's not available in Handbridge, I'm afraid. The nearest course to you would be in Renton. There's one on the 5th of March and another on the 18th of April. Yes, that might be useful. I'll send out a pack to you, if you like, with some details of the courses and also some information about what you need to do to set up and who you need to register with. Great. Can I take your name? Yes, it's Lilla Park. Lilla? Is that L-A-I-L-A? -L -A? No, L-I-L-A. Lilla Park. And your address, please? 39 White Lane, Eastleigh. And have you got an email address? If so, we can send you details of any courses that are happening near you that you might be interested in. Yes, it's lilla.park at rainbow.com. Great. Well, I'll have the information pack sent out to you today. Thanks. That'd be great. My pleasure. Bye. That is the end of Section 1. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 2. In this part of the test, you listen to a telephone conversation. Read the questions carefully before you listen. Susan is telephoning a travel agency. Before listening to the conversation read the inquiry form carefully. Then listen and complete each gap with no more than three words. World Bridges Travel Agency Good morning. Can I help you? Yes. I need some information, please. Yes? Well, I know it's rather late for a reservation, but we're three friends and we'd like to travel to Greece next July. 
Let's see, where would you like to stay? We've been told Mykonos is one of the best islands in the Mediterranean. Would that be possible? It's quite difficult in July. Would you like to stay at a hotel? We'd rather make a self-catering arrangement. Are you thinking of a, a villa or an apartment? I guess a small apartment will be cheaper. Provided it's not during July, yes. You know, prices are lower out of season. How long would you like to stay? About a fortnight, but it might be difficult to change dates, you know. We're three and have different times available. I see. Uh, how many did you say you were in the party? There'll be three of us. All girls, so we need a safe place near the beach. But we cannot spend more than £100 a day. For that price, you won't have many options, I'm afraid. But let me find out. If you could arrange to make it in late June, I might have a bedsitter for £75. It could accommodate three single beds. And it's five minutes walk from the main beach in Mykonos. I'd love that. What's the name of the beach? Have you got it handy? Yes, it's Super Paradise. Have you heard about it? Yes! My parents went there on their honeymoon, and they still keep advising people to visit it. Anyway, I need to talk it over with my friends, though. One of them works during June. She might not be able to change dates. Well, contact your friends, come to an agreement, and give me a ring again. My name is Arnold Smith. You'll find me here any working day from 10am to 6pm but not on Saturdays. Remember, we only have a month left, so you need to make up your minds, I'd say, today or tomorrow. I will. Thank you, Arnold. You've been very kind. Wait, you haven't given me your name. Sorry. I'm Susan Perkins from Kensington. Susan Perkins. P-E-R-K-I-N-S. I'll get back to you tomorrow without fail, Arnold. Thank you again. Bye. That is the end of section two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 3. In this part of the test, you listen to a dialogue about foundation courses and then answer questions. Read the questions carefully before you listen. Listen to a student talking to a college representative about foundation courses. Then answer the questions. Hi there, are you interested in doing a foundation course? No. Well, I'm not sure actually. I'm not sure what I want to do. That's not unusual. Are you thinking about further study? Or were you planning to go straight into a job? I was always thinking I'd go to university, but the fees are so high now. I was looking for other options. Something where I can be sure I'd get a job afterwards. Yes, that's a real problem now, isn't it? The high fees at university. Yeah, that and the fact that I'm really not sure whether a university course really prepares you for any particular job. They're too academic, not really very practical. Well, it sounds as if one of our foundation courses might be the right thing for you. The fees are lower than university fees, and not only that, but because the courses aren't full-time, you can work for two or three days a week, so you can earn and study at the same time. The other good thing is that you get real experience in the workplace where you can develop your employability skills. The teaching is also a lot more personal, with smaller class sizes, which means you get more attention. So, do you get the same qualifications that you would at university? You'd be working towards a foundation degree, not an honours degree, like you would at a university. But you can progress onto an honours course, if you successfully complete the foundation course. So what sort of course were you thinking of taking? I was thinking of going into business or management or something like that. Do you do courses in that? Well, not as such, but we do offer a course in managing public services, 
which might be of interest to you, especially as the public sector is one of the country's biggest employers and it's always looking for talented individuals. A lot of the skills you need for those departments are the same as those you need in business, so you can decide at a late date whether you want to work in a public or a private company. Yeah? What does the course involve? Well, there are a number of different modules you can take. The ones which might be of interest to you are... Uh, let me have a look. This one. Organisational behaviour. What's that about then? You'll learn things like the theoretical and practical nature of organisations, such as how they are set up and structured. There's another module called Managing People, which teaches some principal management techniques for leading groups of people. Then there's this module, Individual and Group Behaviour. That's a human resources module, which looks at how people behave as part of an organisation and how you can motivate them. Then there's this module, Financial Resources. It looks at budgeting and planning, and where you can get different sources of finance. This one looks interesting. Applied psychology for the public services. Yes, it is. It follows on from the individual and group behaviour module I mentioned. It looks at how you can apply psychological factors like stress and memory to work in the public sector. It looks like a really practical course. It is. I don't think you'll be disappointed. So what do I need to be able to get onto a course? You'll need GCSEs in Maths and English at Grade C or higher. Uh-huh. Well, I got a B in Maths and an A in English, so that's OK. And are you doing A-levels? Yeah. Well, you need to get at least 60 points, and that must include one complete A-level. OK. Well, that doesn't sound like too much of a problem. Can I take one of these information packs? Sure. Go ahead. That is the end of section 3. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 4. In this part of the test, you listen to a talk about superstitions and then answer 10 questions. Read the questions carefully before you listen. Listen to a talk about superstitions. Do you think that some people are naturally more lucky than others? Do you believe that you are significantly more or less lucky than other people? These are questions that have interested humans for centuries, and certainly the large number of superstitions, lucky charms and talismans which have prevailed through history in civilizations across the world would suggest that humans have an almost innate belief in the power of luck. The superstitions we have today have long histories. The number 13 is considered unlucky because that was the number of people at the table at Jesus Christ's Last Supper. Touching wood comes from pagan rituals of imbibing the powers of tree gods. Many people do not walk under ladders. This superstition does not come from the notion that a bucket of paint may drop on your head as you pass underneath. Rather, the shape of the ladder against the wall forms the shape of a triangle, which was thought to represent the symbol of the Holy Trinity, and passing through it would break these powerful bounds and bring ill fortune. But do these superstitions really have an effect? Many researchers have pondered this and all have found that superstitions have no effect on people's fortunes. One of these experiments was conducted by a New York high school student and superstition skeptic, Mark Levin, who decided to test the notion that a black cat walking across your path would change your luck either to the better or to the worse. To find out, he asked two people to play a simple coin tossing game. Then a black cat was encouraged to walk across their path and the participants played the game once more and the results were analysed. As a control the experiment was repeated using a white cat to test whether the fortunes of the players was any different using a black or a white cat. Unsurprisingly neither the white nor the black cat affected the results of the coin tossing game. 
Other experiments involving broken mirrors and walking under ladders have shown similar results. But even though superstitions have no effect on our lives, some people really do seem to be luckier than others. Take Barnett Heltzberg Jr. for example. This man had built up a successful chain of jewellery stores but was ready to sell up his business and retire. One day he was walking in the street and he heard a woman call, Hello Mr. Buffett. Heltzberg wondered whether the Mr. Buffett in question could be the famous investor Warren Buffett. If it was, then he may well be interested in buying his company. Heltzberg decided to take the chance and approach the man. The meeting proved to be fortuitous, as about a year later Buffett bought Heltzberg's stores, and all because he happened to overhear a woman calling his name. Professor Richard Wiseman decided to test what it was that made some people seemingly luckier than others. He invited people who considered themselves either lucky or unlucky to participate in a number of experiments. Over the years of his study, he asked his volunteers to complete diaries, take part in interviews and intelligence tests. He found that people's behaviour and approach to life are the primary cause of their level of luck in life. In one experiment, he asked both lucky and unlucky people to count the number of pictures in a newspaper. On one page of the newspaper was written the words, Stop counting, tell the experimenter you have seen this, and win $250. It was found that lucky people saw this headline while unlucky people did not. Did this experiment show that some people are therefore luckier than others? Or does it show that their behaviour is different? This and other tests reveal that unlucky people tend to be more anxious than lucky people. And this anxiety means that people are fixated on one thing and less able to notice the unexpected. Lucky people are more relaxed and open and therefore see opportunities beyond those that they are looking for. Wiseman also noticed that lucky people have more variety and change in their lives and this in turn increases the potential for chance opportunities in people's lives. So, is it possible to change people's luck by changing their outlook? Wiseman says yes. He created a luck school in which he explained how lucky people create good fortune in their lives and gave them some exercises to do, such as breaking their everyday routines and dealing with bad luck in a more positive way. The results were dramatic. A high number of people were happier and more satisfied in their lives. Some had found romantic partners through chance encounters and others had had lucky breaks at work. So, overall, Wiseman's research in the field of luck has revealed that although there seems to be no truth behind superstitions, some people really are luckier than others, and this is mostly down to our thoughts and behaviour, and proves that by changing these, we can actually increase the amount of luck we experience in our lives. That is the end of section 4. You now have half a minute to check your answers. That is the end of the listening test. In the IELTS test, you will now have 10 minutes to transfer your answers to an answer sheet. Now check your answers. Thank you for watching and subscribe the channel for more such contents.